It seems like everyone could use a little inspiration, hope, and happiness right now. And nobody better exemplifies these traits than my favorite superhero, Superman. He isn't an easy character to write for, but when a writer understands the characters and how best to tell a story with them, they are often the best of any superhero stories. Through this post, I hope to explain why that is. I'll go over some of his background, his characteristics, and some of his appearances in media. Most people probably know Superman's background, at least to some degree, so I'll just go over some of the key points from it. Superman first appeared in Action Comics No. 1 by Joe Shuster in June 1938. This comic book is widely considered as the debut of the superhero genre. Over the years, Superman's origins have changed and had different interpretations, but generally, he is an alien named Kal-El from the planet Krypton, sent to Earth just before the planet is destroyed. Once arriving on Earth, he is taken in and raised by Jonathan and Martha Kent, who name him Clark Kent. As he grows, he learns to control his powers, with the Kents feeling he should keep them secret until he fully grows and can decide what type of life he wants to live. The Kents teach him his values of being selfless, kind-hearted, and gentle. These traits learned from his human parents are what make him a great superhero. Superman's personality plays a big role in why I am drawn to him. I think a lot of the movies have a tough time portraying it, except for in some scenes with his love interest Lois Lane. The thing about Superman is that, being nearly invulnerable, he is very laid back and relaxed. Think about it. If you didn't have much to fear, you'd probably be pretty chill. People are happy to be around him, and I think part of that is having a relaxed personality. Another part of his personality that gets overlooked in favor of epic battles in the films is his unrelenting desire to do good. While some superheroes are more crime fighters, he truly is a hero. That feeling everyone gets when they want to help someone out, to do a good deed, Superman feels that way all the time. He gives each task equal importance, whether that's fighting an alien bent on destroying Earth, or getting a cat out of a tree. He won't start the next task until he finishes the first. When Superman stories are at its best, it's not him in a big fight with some brute. It's when he is getting past some emotional hurdle or mental block. One of my favorite parts of his origin is when Jonathan Kent dies. Some media has done it differently, but the version I'm talking about is when he has a heart attack. This is a lesson for Clark, that he can't always save someone. Sometimes there are complications not even he can prevent. A superhero is defined by his greatest villain. What makes Lex Luthor such a great villain is that he is no match for Superman physically, but mentally he is a challenge for him. Lex has had many different origins and paths to villainhood as well, but the ones that are best is when... He is a parallel to Clark, having his parents not give him the love and respect the Kents gave Clark, and teaching him to be ruthless and selfish. Showing how different upbringings define who they become, I think is very powerful. Lex also helps to show one of Superman's greatest traits, his unwillingness to give up on someone, and see the good in them. Superman never kills Lex, because he sees a glimmer of hope within him. When Lex is being written well, he is a white knight, claiming to be a savior, but in truth only doing it for selfish reasons. He'll say he is trying to kill Superman in order to protect humanity from alien invasion, but he really is just jealous that one man should have these powers that he himself cannot obtain. So I want to get into a few different appearances of his, first in film. While I don't think any of the movies have really grasped his character entirely, some of the films I think do a pretty good job. The early Christopher Reeve films I haven't seen in a long time, but from what I remember, his personality is probably the most accurate to the source material, especially when he is speaking with Lois. Those films, however, 
have other problems and haven't aged all that well. But Christopher Reeve's performance is still great, and the soundtrack by John Williams is iconic. The 2006 Superman Returns had Brandon Routh playing the man in red underwear, and I think he is good in the role, but that film falters in a lot of other places, such as the effects and its over-reliance on Lois to get emotional beats from Superman. Now with the recent DCEU films, Superman is played by Henry Cavill, who I love in the role. And while I don't think Man of Steel is a very accurate portrayal of Superman, I really like the interpretation. They chose to have a more dour, grim Superman, and while I will always prefer the more optimistic and hopeful version, I think the way they wrote the changes work with the changes that they made to his origin. In Man of Steel, they took Jonathan Kent's death in a different direction. They have Jonathan choose to allow himself to die instead of Clark revealing his powers in order to save him. I think this would cause Clark to have a slightly darker outlook because of him blaming himself for his father's death. The film has some other issues where Superman doesn't always save people when he could, and even directly causes harm to some innocent bystanders in the final fight. But I think it can be excused as it's his first time embracing his superhero role, and he is inexperienced. The finale is controversial among Superman fans, and while I don't have an issue with the decision myself, I wish they had built it up a little bit better to make it more impactful. In the following DCEU movies, Batman vs. Superman, the theatrical release, Superman felt like he was barely a character, but the director's cut does help and even shows some scenes of him saving people. Justice League is a mess of a film, but Superman is probably the best character in it, and has a bit more of the laid-back personality I like about him, but it just feels shoehorned in. Now for some of the media I really enjoy. My favorite TV series of all time is Smallville. I grew up watching it, and it was filmed in and around my hometown in beautiful British Columbia. I think through the longer format of a TV series, we get to see a lot more development in Clark's character. The series follows Clark before he becomes Superman, starting with his time in high school in Smallville, before going to college and then working at the Daily Planet in Metropolis. The show does something I wish the filmmakers would do, and make it more emotional than action-focused. A lot of the episodes can show a wide range of comedic, lighthearted moments to dramatic, dark moments. Once it gets an action sequence, it's normally resolved pretty quickly, never overstaying its welcome. Tom Welling, while being a little amateurish in the early seasons, really comes into his own and is my favorite portrayal of the character. The scene stealer in this series, however, is Michael Rosenbaum's Lex Luthor. He really nails everything I love about the character. The writers decided to do something which had been explored a little before, but never to this extent, by having Clark and Lex be friends for a long time before they become enemies. The series does a great job of showing how someone could fall to the dark places Lex eventually gets to. One other thing the series does well is genre hopping. Sometimes it's a teen soap opera, other times it's an action thriller, and one time it was even about fighting vampires. Carrie Fisher was there. It was great. But seriously, this show is phenomenal, and even though it's older, the effects for the most part look better than a lot of the current DC shows. The last material I want to go over is what I think is the very best Superman has to offer. All-Star Superman, a 12-issue comic book series by Grant Morrison and Frank Quietly. Right from the beginning, you can tell they nailed the personality, with the cover art for the first issue showing a totally relaxed Superman in the clouds watching a sunset. The story is that Superman saves a group of scientists that are exploring the sun which in turn overcharges Superman's cells with solar radiation. This makes Superman extremely powerful, but he's dying from it. So throughout the story, Superman isn't going to be seeing any physical limitations to overcome, 
which means the writers can fully focus on the emotional side of Superman. Superman tries to either find a replacement for himself after he's gone, or make the world as safe as he can before going. He goes on many little adventures, tries to propose to Lois, visits Lex in prison as Clark, but one page from issue 10 is what makes this series so powerful. The issue shows many things happen through the course of one day. At one point, Superman overhears a phone call between a therapist and a girl that sounds urgent. And then we get the one page. A girl stands at the edge of an apartment building patio and drops her phone, showing how far above the streets of Metropolis she is. The next panel shows her face, eyes closed, clearly preparing to take the next step. Then Superman is behind her and tells her, you're much stronger than you think you are, trust me, and gives her a hug. Just thinking about it makes my eyes well up a bit. The thing that makes it so great is that Superman didn't need to use any superpowers in order to save her. It could have been anyone, and the words probably didn't even matter that much. She just needed someone there for her. This is what I like most, is when he is doing something anybody could do. He just chooses to do it all the time. So I hope that explains why I love Superman fairly well. I know a lot of people think he isn't that cool. And I understand why. The films are where most people are exposed to him, and he hasn't been done that well in film. I think for someone to get him right in film, they can't be trying to do a blockbuster action film, and instead need to do something a little weirder. And he definitely is dorky. If I had to describe him in brief, he is the one superhero that when he saves a kid, and they tell him they like his outfit, he would say, Thanks, my mom made it for me. And I think that's awesome. If you like comics, a friend of mine recently created a webtoon series called Seventh Down. It follows two heroes, Lazarus and Novak, as they deal with demons, ghosts, and other superpowered beings. I've put a link down in the description where you can read the first chapter.